I've never been interested in portraiture as such. It's not, it, it sometimes surprises me when people use that word. And um, I mean, I get it. <laughs> it's like I get that at the moment these are faces, but it's, um, I work a lot in um, sort of moving image and some performance work and um, installation and, and various other forms that were but always with the body, like it's sort of everything has always sort of centred around the body. I've always been really interested in, um, yeah, the politics of the body and, and it just feels like, for me, that sort of sight is the place where all the stories get told and we, where we kind of rub up against the world in all of these different ways. I guess a lot of that earlier work was more sort of explicitly political um, in terms of thinking about power and as time has gone on, that element still feels really I guess I still feel like I'm thinking about a lot of the same things, but the materials have started to tell their own story more. So I kind of think of paint as a body itself, you know? The material feels very fleshy to me. It feels very like these kind of, literally it's like these skins that you're carving into the surface or the work that I was doing previously, the really kind of thick, completely impasto uh, paint work where it, it felt like you know, with some of it was like five centimetres thick, sort of slumping off, like loose skin off the canvas, very, very bodily work. Where I've been kind of going to with this new work is, feels more like um, a type of almost um, scarring or, or clawing, or um, it's a different kind of way of finding my way into that surface. Um, it just feels like a portal, I guess. It's like a, it's a, it, it's a, a carrier, you know? I think for a long time I've not even been interested in what the painting is of in that sense. It's like, what are the marks doing to us? How do they take us through into that other space? You know, that, um, so I guess one of the issues I kind of work with a lot in my uh, practice is um, thinking around ideas of um, embodiment and liminality and that, that very kind of in-between, in-betweenness. I guess I think of sort of the abstracting as the liminal kind of aspects of the part that are, you know, a lot of the breaking down. Um, yeah, I guess use paint in a way that kind of mimics uh, or, or recalls or remembers our our experiences, our, our physical experiences of breaking down. So, you know, the, all the different ways that we change and reform, you know, so when we're grieving, we talk about, you know, falling apart with grief and it's literally like bodies fall, you know, we're falling apart and so, at the moment with a lot of the mark making I'm kind of looking at trying to work out how how to let the marks tell the story of what's happening kind of emotionally. It's like I need a substance to carry feeling of this form that we know really well. So we know the face, we read faces constantly, we you know, we're used to seeing paintings of faces. That's not a kind of there's nothing unique or interesting about that, but I feel like there's something about, because of that, we bring a, bring a certain kind of uh, boredom to it or a certain, you know, where we're not sort of mentally really engaging. It's just that, you know, it's very easy to do like a, a portrait that's a reflection or a mirror or something, and I'm not interested in that. People do that and they do it amazingly and it's this beautiful thing, but it's, I'm not trying to find a likeness to someone. I'm not trying to bring something of them through it's um it's just really like a scaffolding to start looking for feeling you know i really love the challenge of making paintings that have to work twice you know um that work as abstract works basically like when the when you're kind of close up um and then when you get that distance that they come sometimes into kind of a hyper focus um the new this new work is a little bit different because it's a little more raw and sort of open more sp space or air growing going you know through the marks but but still has the same sense of that um, and you know I guess conceptually I was thinking about different ways that we um, experience liminality in our bodies and in our worlds and that that breaking down and the rebuilding and things like that and just wanted to yeah wanted to explore like materially how do we how do I let the material talk about that you know I'm in the world generally. I'm interested in, I guess, thresholds or those those places where, for me, kind of, you know, moments of of transformation or shifting. It always happens where 
the world gets slippery, you know? Like there's a lot of kind of the fixed, we know this is like this and, you know, all these different elements, you know, past, future, uh, male, female, whatever the different elements are, there's these kind of fixed places. And uh, my experience of the world has not really been like that. It's been that where, where things feel like there's energy or, or life, it's actually in those kind of terrifying, amazing places in between. And looking for that in the paintings as well, looking for that um, that potency, like it feels like that's, for me, that's where that the kind of magic of the universe is, you know? Yeah, I'm thinking, so some of the elements there that I guess have fed into that that curiosity or that sense of interest is, you know, so one of the things is kind of around gender and my experience of gender has not been sort of static. And so some works, they, they tend to have names that refer to those states of shifting. So remember a painting um, was called Laha, and Laha is, you know, um, basically when earth is tumbling down the side of an avalanche. There was, um, a painting I made which I really loved called Selkie um, and that was sort of you know Selkie's the stories of, of the shapeshifter and the Celtic traditions. I guess there's there's a thing around um, trans stuff for example that like idea that it's a very contemporary thing you know that being transgender or gender diverse is this kind of new thing um, and all of the kind of baggage that goes with that and I think a lot of for me a lot of that the work that I've been doing is to try and um, I'm just so not interested in that conversation. What I am interested in is like the kind of ancientness of shape-shifting and of, of changing form and of these, um, these kind of qualities that are so important to all of us in these different ways. That, and I feel like, I do feel like um, those of us who are trans or gender diverse have got a particular quality of understanding around that because we've had to kind of physically go through the world in these ways which means that everything um, you kind of you bump up against the edges and you find this incredible space which is in the middle which is what I find creatively really potent in that space is that um, is that it feels like that's where potential is you know so it feels like that the liminality the kind of in-betweenness is not this thing that you need to apologise for and move on and quickly get to the stable place, you know, so the world is comfortable with you. It's like, well, what if we actually, what is this place? What's this magic here, you know? And technically, you know, with painting, I try and stay in that place, you know, and because I feel like that's, yeah, that's where these stories kind of sneak through that can't otherwise, um, that with the, if you get too much clarity, they won't come. The world in here is very practical, very not mystical, very not, you know, like all of these kind of things, these these things you really want your creative work to do or, or spaces you want them to open up. And here, totally, it has these moments in here where it's, um, where it's totally otherworldly and amazing. And, but probably 95% is just like labor. How I work is quite, um, it's a bit of a kind of marathon type process. Um, and I think I've invented these various sort of tricks for myself to force myself into the place where I can make the, my best work, you know, which is, um, so for example, I used to work, um, used to work in these really kind of almost Renaissance era ways of painting. So working, building up really thin layers of oil over, you know, to, would, a painting would take me probably five months to make with, you know, 40 layers and, and looking at the sort of translucency of skin and you know starting painting with the the bones and then the kind of uh, flesh and meat and veins and skin and then the light on the skin you know those kind of and I nerded out beyond belief at all of that like I love that kind of way of working but so this way of working um, now is kind of like the opposite to that in the sense that I've got a basically three day period for the paint to before it gets too tacky and I can't keep moving it. Um, and so also mark making is hugely important. So I sort of, I feel like so much of how we read a painting is, um, you know, it's to do with the kind of the energy that the marks hold. 
you know, and you watch people, if you, if you see someone, um, I love watching people in galleries because they, you know, they walk up to, if you see this beautiful little, you know, delicately drawn or etched, you know, someone goes to see an etching and they kind of, they almost creep up to them. You know, they sort of, they walk up like this and they're looking very, their body language is all like this. And um, they, you know, we're really in communion or in conversation with mark making it such a strong language that we, not only understand, but we kind of speak physically, you know, and so, and then you, you watch someone walk towards a really big gestural painting and they move differently, you know, their bodies start kind of echoing these marks. And so I was sort of thinking a lot about that and about the kind of choreography of, of that relationship or being in relation with mark making and painting. And I remember coming home from a show um, quite a few years ago and bringing some works home and they were, um, really as images they were doing what i wanted them to do but but when you physically pick them up as objects they were they looked not at, not that different to how they look on screen you know they sort of were and I, I just kind of thought you know it's such a rare thing to be making objects to be making these kind of really sculptural physical bodies or um i knew that they had to be activated i knew that they had to kind of you know, I'm working with the body, which is the ultimate sort of three-dimensional experience. So I was like, it wasn't satisfying that they were that two-dimensional. And I knew I wanted to sort of literally put, push them out into real space. And, um, and I was trying to think about how to do this. And I got all very cerebral and I was trying all these things that wasn't working. Then had a bit of a um, tanty in the studio. Um, <laughs> wasn't my finest hour. And ended up just being like, ah, oh, fuck it, throw this paint at this thing. And, um, you know, went away to get a little bit of a breather. And then I came back and I looked at that painting. And I was like, hang on, what's going on there? And then I put it on the wall and then I was like, ooh. And started, and I just was like a little animal with it and just used my hands and just grabbed the stuff that was on the palette. And I just started smearing this painting. And it was this amazing thing. It was literally like kind of watching this form come out of mud, you know, like very ancient creation-y feeling. And um, and that was, you know, and then I was like, oh, here you are, and, and we're sharing space, we're physically sharing space. And I think that, um, you know, I know impasto painting is a thing, but I didn't find it through, I found it through my own kind of mess. And, and then I just wanted to make these paintings that were more and more fleshy and more, um, you know, using knives and um, spreading paint and cutting paint and thinking about different sensations of the body and trying to kind of, you know, just experiment with that in the way that I was using painting as well. I ended up finding that to work in this, work in this way and keep all of the energy in the painting that I wanted it all just done in the one time. Um, so by working at a really large scale and working with that level of thickness, like after three days of painting, yeah, it's tacky, you can't move it, it starts to split. And um, so basically that creates this, uh, these parameters for myself to make the work. And so they happen in three days, no matter what. Um, they also don't happen in three days, you know, but it's like, that that's my window. And so to get ready for that, um, I sort of, you know, it's very practical. Like I have to like make my lunches three days ahead and I have to like get a good sleep and all of that stuff. And, and I sort of do some work beforehand around temperature and things like that. And, and but I try not to over cook it. Yeah, this work here is for the um, show that's opening on June 14th at White Space. Uh, it's also, I think, it's part of this new way of working as part of a new body of work I've been developing, um, or has been developing me, <laughs> whatever. Um, I feel very not in control of it a lot of the time, but um, also working towards a, 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 I've got a solo at Te Manawa next year, um, which is really exciting. It's a chance to work in a really huge space, so um, getting to think a lot more about scale and, you know, possibilities there. But um, where I'm at at the moment is um, I'm just sort of like, I've probably got one more week of painting to go. I feel like I'm just still so in the work, which is tricky because it's always like at this point, like I feel like, you know, in six months, I'll be really able to say what's going on in the work. But like right now, I'm just in that really messy in it phase. Um, 
I know that there's a lot of stuff changing. I know that the work is looking, you know, it's probably the biggest visual shift in my practice in maybe the last kind of six years, um, which, you know, in part is just, you know, working on the, with the raw linen, looking for marks that are a lot more open, leaving a lot more breathing space, um, which, you know, technically feels like it's, um, it's, it maybe looks like less, but it's, the, the challenge is it feels like I'm trying to make these paintings through the top of a needle, you know, like it's like I've got to get, I've only got these much more limited amount of vocabulary or marks and, and to try and get that same depth of feeling or in fact more feeling. Next week um, I'll talk to the paintings about what their names are. Um, it, that's sort of how that happens and then they tend to tell me. Um, in a strange way, like it sort of um, just get a se strong sense of what that, what its name is, and and it's so surprising to me. Like I love that because it's so surprising. It's like often, oh, oh, wow, you know, and it brings this whole layer, you know. Um, there's a new show, um, and it's feeling really raw and feeling really exciting, and I feel kind of terrified and really excited to share it. It feels raw in so many ways, but I feel like that's what I'm wanting. You know, that's when the work that I feel excited about seeing is the work that I'm trying to make, you know. So um, art in general is important to me because it's not rational, you know. And I'm so grateful, so deeply grateful for the irrational. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Um, you know, the minute, if anything had to be answerable to what is kind of rational, then just all of the yummy art would not ever get made because it's not that, yeah, it's a different, I don't know, it's a different world and it's a, um, for me, that's the point of life. Like that's like, it's kind of like the place where I get to feel myself expand and, and um, it's, um, and I guess that comes back to the, the rational, unrational, you know, like I love that. I love that like when I'm starting the day, my job is to have no expectations, you know, to turn up like a hundred percent and to be really active. But the minute I start expecting something of that relationship, it dissolves, it just like dissolves through my hands, you know.